So before we get into the meat of my talk, I uh, just returned uh, from a city called Boston, where my uh, office lives. Um, uh, so I work for Dockyard, and uh, yeah, I've been there for the past four weeks. Uh, I arrived there during the Orlando shootings, so this is pretty much the first thing I saw when I was in Boston. Um, I uh, brought some snacks for my dockyard people, but uh, not everybody understood how they worked. <laughs> yeah. um, the reason I was in Boston was Wicked Good Amber, which is our own version of an Amber conference, uh, which was great, and uh, the after party was awesome. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Um, during my stay, I sampled over diff 100 different brews, which are great. Um, uh, and I've been to the 4th of July parade and the 4th of July fireworks, so I feel really American right now. Uh, I've been whale watching, and of course, I went to a ball game, go Red Sox. <laughs> but not everything was fun and games because, well, in America, pro likely the bets are too short. <laughs> and uh, a bird pooped on my Amber Kong <laughs> swag bag. So, into a pluggable approach to service workers. So, um, yeah, raise your hand if you know what service workers are, and I'm going to assume about everyone knows, has heard of them. And so keep your hands up so uh, if you know how they work a bit. Like, you don't necessarily have to have worked with it, but like how they, uh, if you have heard of it or worked with it. And so now keep them up uh, if you uh, actually wrote some service worker code. So there you go, most hands. <laughs> okay, and who runs a service worker in production? So that's one person and one half. Okay, so that's not a lot. So let's see if we can improve that by making it just easy. Uh, so I'll define a s service worker. Um, and uh, I got this from the W3C spec, so the words on the screen are probably gibberish. So it enables applications to take advantage of persistent background processing, um, which actually just means it runs in uh, separately from your uh, document that are, you are sh seeing, and it uh, does not have, to, or it can live longer than uh, your browsing session. Uh, and it's an event-driven web worker, which responds to events dispatched from documents and other sources, which roughly means that uh, when you browse, things happen and the service worker can respond to it. And that's all it does. It's not like a program that's running in the background, it just responds to things you do in the browser and some external things. So w which events are there? Um, so you have install, which is when um, the uh, service worker is first loaded goes through the install event, it gives you a chance to do things when it's installed, so you can, for example, uh, download all the essential files for your app and uh, cache them somewhere, so the next time it's quicker to load stuff. Then you have activate, and activate is when uh, your service worker is installed and it's, uh, and it's being used by the browser to handle events. And the, that last part is a uh, distinction you need to remember when you're working with uh, service workers. Then you have fetch. Fetch is uh, when uh, you make a re HTTP request, so for example, AJAX and loading files like images all go through fetch when a service worker is ac active. Uh, you have message, which is actually post message, which gives you a generic way to communicate with the service worker and the other way around. Uh, you have push, 
which is uh, the one of the external events. So your uh, backend server can send a message to your service worker uh, to wake the service worker up and handle uh, that notification from the server. Uh, and then you have sync, which you can use to uh, synchronize data that you have stored uh, locally in your user session when he comes back online while he wasn't before, for example. So let's look at some examples. So uh, let's just take the Dockyard blog, or the website, actually. Uh, so when you open it the first time, it um, installs the service worker. And when it's done, in, and for our website, it then just loads all the static assets and puts it in the cache. So when it's done downloading those files, it will activate. And when it's activated, then it will handle events. So for example, when you browse to another page, then it will send a request to the service worker. And the service worker can then send um, its, uh, uh, it forward the request to, um, to the backend server. Uh, it can cache it and then respond with it to, um, uh, and yeah, well, respond with it. So um, when uh, a server worker is not for like specifically one page, but if you have multiple things open at the same time, then the service worker will handle all of those things that are open at the same time with one service worker, not multiple ones. So that's also a thing to remember, that's there, that there only is one service worker active at one time. Um, so in the background, when you don't have anything open, you can send push notifications. So your server sends a push notification to your service worker. And then a, you can make a notification out of it. Uh, the other way around, when the browser is closed, but you were offline, and now you get online, then you can do some tasks in the background. And uh, that's, uh, well, really handy for when you, um, when, when someone is out in the city but has bad coverage, and you don't want to waste his 3G uh, data. So you say, like, when he's on Wi-Fi, just send over this super large file because uh, we don't want to make his bill higher than needed. So uh, oh, uh, a service worker enables you to build the next level of web apps, uh, also known as progressive web apps. But I recently learned that that's uh, Google's term. And I like this one better, instant web apps. Um, uh, so progressive web apps let you uh, compete with native without a handicap, which is a good distinction to make. Uh, and it's like the first time we actually, uh, without so without any handicap, we can um, build apps. So we can do push notifications. We can do everything uh, native apps can do, and then a ton of more things that the web does better than native already. So uh, yeah, if you're not convinced, uh, my boss, Brian Cardarella, gives a talk about uh, progressive web apps, but then for the value proposition of it. And his conclusion is, uh, pause will save you money. So uh, I think he meant PWAs, but um, so. Service workers in an Ember.js app. So uh, there are a lot of ways to do it. So the first one is you can roll one by hand. But roll one by hand is um, yeah, not always ideal, because uh, your company can build one version, but the other company builds another one. And uh, so everybody comes up with his own recipe. And that's like not really what you want. 
So um, the next one is Broccoli Service Worker. It was built over a year ago by uh, Jay Kleinsmeet, John Kleinsmeet. Um, it's a wrapper around Google Service Worker Toolbox, which is uh, just uh, a bunch of code that does all the things you want to do with caching for you. And you, uh, or you configure it by uh, doing some stuff in the config environment. So for example, you can say which URLs you want to pre-cache, which things you want to not cache, things you want to do network first. And uh, though this seems really great, it's actually, in my opinion, not ideal. Because um, as you can see, uh, if you want to do anything more than that the service worker toolbox does, you have to add a file in SW include files. And um, then you're back to rolling your own uh, thing. And we are like magical unicorns. We always want something different. So uh, I am introducing Ember Service Worker, which uh, is a pluggable approach to service workers. And what that means is that uh, it does not have any batteries included. And uh, a good way to figure out or what it, when you install Ember Service Worker, uh, what you get is just a, a lot of boilerplate uh, things that will set up the Service Worker for you and have some middleware that helps you make better Service Workers. But in the end, when, uh, when uh, your app boots up and you start doing things, if you only have Ember Service Worker installed, nothing happens. So if you want something to happen, then you have to install plugins. So for example, you can Ember install Ember Service Worker Asset Cache. And my naming strategy for these things is really horrible. But well, it's uh, simple. So Asset Cache uh, just finds all the things in your disk folder, lists it out. And on the install event, it downloads all of them and puts in a cache. So if you have a lot of assets, then right now it's not that uh, helpful because it will just download 20 megabytes of things in the background. So, hmm, I can improve that. But uh, yeah, so um, you can also uh, another one I made is uh, the cache fallback. So that's when uh, something that's not cached it will first try to do a network request and then cache it, but uh, and then the next time, if you're offline or whatever, then it has it in the cache and you can reuse it. So uh, I'm going to make a prediction. So with what, what I'm building, so in, in a while, I'm predicting that, in, uh, that the ecosystem that's going to be built around it, if it takes off, so that's uh, still a question, that 90% of the use cases you have with service workers will be covered with little or to no configuration. You just do a few Ember installs and maybe one or two lines of configuration, and you're done. And then the other 10% can be achieved by building uh, private plugins. And uh, But the thing is that when you build private pl plugins, they are built on top of a lot of boilerplate code, so you don't have to write that for yourself. And all those things are tested. and work nicely, of course. So a while ago, like a little over a month, I uh, tweeted, if I were to believe the daily Ember tips mailing list, building an Ember GS app is no more than running some Ember commands on the terminal. Which uh, back then I was like, yeah, that's just stupid. But then Lauren uh, commented or replied, you mean you don't Ember install my app and call it a day? on which I said, here I was writing all this code by hand. Turns out you just run a few Ember commands, and you're done. So uh, when it came around to uh, when I was done with the proof of concept of Ember Service Worker, I submitted a pull request to the Dockyard website. And this is all I had to do. It's three lines in 
package to JSON. So Brian responded, whoa, that's all it's needed, and that's all that you need. So, and, and this is not because I am awesome, but this is because the Dockyard community, or the Ember community is awesome, because, um, yeah, uh, all the things with Ember CLI and Ember itself, uh, we can just build things really quickly and ship them and uh, tell everybody to Ember install your awesome thing, and you're done. So give yourself a round of applause. And yeah, so in a year, your UX designers in your company will just be building Ember apps with Microsoft pro front page. <laughs> so how do you build a plugin for, uh, for Ember Service Worker? Well, you start off with building or uh, making an uh, uh, add-on, and then you add the Ember Service Worker plugin keyword to package.json. And after that, you make a folder called uh, service worker. And in that service worker, you add some code. And if uh, th that can be just five lines or a lot of lines, doesn't matter. And uh, after that, you just do Ember release and npm publish. And then everybody can just Ember install your plugin and use it. So that's quite easily. So, but right now, um, it's not ready yet. I'm sorry. I I wish I could tell you like uh, to uh, do try this all at home right now, but instead I have to tell you do not try this at home yet. Uh, and that's because uh, well, well implementing these things, you get trolled by one of the classic computer science problems, which is cache invalidation. So uh, I still need to tweak that a little bit, and then uh, I hope like in a month or a few months I can tell you, like, I'll oh, just use this, and uh, we're going to build uh, progressive web apps in five minutes. So. Uh, Oh well, I should have shown you that one. So, what's next? What I'm, what I am, I planning to do to make everything uh, awesome? So first, right now you just write flat files. Uh, there's no uh, Babel transpilation, no concatenation, no module system. Uh, so I'm planning on adding that first. And if I'm done with that, then I want to add some middleware. And this middleware will help you uh, overcome the problems with service workers. So for example, uh, the fetch event, once you call respond with, uh, know when something else calls respond with after it, it will uh, error in your console. And um, um, well, it's... Uh, and it's making race conditions for you, so you want something that prevents you to do race conditions when uh, when building isolated pieces of code. So you need a little bit of middleware for that. And thirdly, I want to make something that makes service worker testing easy, because it's not like right now. It's like even harder than testing an Ember app in the pre 1.0 series. Um, so the strategy I'm betting on is is like a very ambitious one, which is trying to get QUnit to run within the service worker, and then having it post message back to the QUnit in the document that you're viewing. So it will tell the service worker to run this test, and then the test will run in the service worker itself, and then it will post message back, it failed or passed. So that's pretty ambitious, if you ask me. But uh, I think it's the best way, and that's why I think we should do that. So uh, well, I'll raise your hand again. So uh, Gavin, raise your hand again if you work with service workers. Uh, 
So I need you to help me build, uh, uh, build this because I can't do this alone. And everybody else who's interested, not only Gavin, uh, uh, is always welcome to help me out, especially if you're interested in these things. So uh, my goal is to have at least a production-ready solution before Safari ships service worker. So that's <laughs> not too ambitious, but it's at least achievable. <laughs> so um, that's all, folks. And uh, uh, yeah, I hope I can help a lot of people build awesome apps soon. <laughs>